What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we cover everything related to stocks and investing. Last year, the pandemic completely changed the way we live and work by putting a much greater emphasis on virtual technologies you can use from home. This was massively beneficial to the so-called stay-at-home stocks such as Zoom and Peloton. They saw demand for their products explode while old economy companies were suffering. But the $64 million question is how sustainable their growth will be now that vaccines are widely distributed and society is returning to some semblance of normality. A few weeks ago, Peloton reported a disastrous earnings report where they missed analyst expectations on both the top and bottom lines as well as drastically cut their full year guidance. Since then, the stock has been cut more than in half. Now that people feel comfortable going to the gym, demand for Peloton's home fitness machines has evaporated. The stay-at-home stocks have created hundreds of billions of dollars of paper gains for investors and have helped the tech-heavy QQQ index increase more than 60% from its pre-pandemic levels. Both individual and institutional investors alike now have huge allocations to stay-at-home stocks. With the disastrous Peloton news still fresh in their minds, investors are sitting at the edge of their seats, waiting for the next shoe to drop in the stay-at-home complex. And just this past Thursday, on December 2nd, we got exactly that. DocuSign, which was one of the biggest COVID beneficiaries, reported earnings. Despite beating on both the top and bottom lines, the stock price fell by more than 40%. That's because the CEO gave guidance saying that their revenue and growth rate in the coming quarters will slow dramatically. One of the biggest losers of the recent price action was Kathy Wood, whose ARK ETFs lost more than $100 million on their DocuSign positions. The all-time chart of DocuSign stock is very telling. More than half of the gains it made since its IPO in 2018 were wiped out literally overnight. In this video, we'll go over what DocuSign does, how they achieved so much success during the pandemic, and why the stock price fell more than 40% on Friday. DocuSign produces a software solution that allows people to sign business and legal documents from a smartphone or a computer. This is very useful for large enterprises who have to sign formal documents on a daily basis. Imagine that you work at an insurance company. Every time you have to process an insurance claim, you need to have policyholders sign documents. If you have to go and meet with the policyholders in person, this can take a huge amount of time and travel expenses. Thus, DocuSign's easy-to-use online platform can save large companies millions of dollars per year by cutting out unnecessary travel costs and allowing their employees to focus on higher value activities. From a technological standpoint, one of DocuSign's biggest differentiators is their robust verification features. They use picture verification of government-issued IDs to make sure that people cannot fraudulently sign documents on behalf of someone else. Even if you're not signing important documents online, just about everyone has sensitive information such as credit card and banking info stored online. With cyber breaches becoming more and more common these days, it's more important than ever to make sure your sensitive data and browsing history remain secure and confidential. That's where our sponsor, Atlas VPN, comes in. Atlas VPN allows you to remain anonymous by rerouting all of your internet traffic through an encrypted tunnel. It defends against online snooping, be it hackers, governments, or even your own internet service provider. Basically, it masks your internet identity so nobody can track you or steal your data. They have an honestly very good data breach monitor feature that tracks any data breaches that affect your internet accounts. With this tool, you can know when your accounts have been exposed in data breaches and change your passwords before someone steals something important like your bank info. Also, Atlas VPN masks your IP address, which can protect you from censorship and other internet restrictions. That's one of the most useful things about Atlas. For example, many Netflix movies and shows like Rick and Morty and Brooklyn Nine-Nine aren't available in the US or other geographies. With Atlas VPN, you can connect to the countries where these shows are available and unlock those shows. Right now they're running a limited time promo deal where you can get it for just $1.39 a month and get the first 3 months for free when you sign up with my link in the description below. They already have over 6 million users. Atlas did a lot to help pay for this video, so if you buy their 3 year deal, you'll also be supporting this channel. Thank you. DocuSign IPO'd in 2018 with a valuation a little under $5 billion. Wall Street immediately fell in love with this new and innovative software company. And for good reason. Their revenue grew rapidly as more and more customers wanted to sign up for their electronic service platform. For the second calendar quarter of 2017 through the first quarter of 2020, their revenue grew at an annualized rate of 37%. The company reported an operating loss in every quarter, but investors were willing to overlook this given how strong their growth was. In March of 2020, the coronavirus pandemic spread rapidly throughout the world, forcing billions of people to study and work from home. This was a disaster for millions of restaurants and other small businesses who rely on in-person interaction. But it was a huge boon for DocuSign. 
With employees forced to work from home, their online signature platform went from a convenience to a necessity. Their revenue exploded to the upside, increasing at a 50% annualized rate from the first calendar quarter of 2021 through the third quarter of 2021. And while they continued to post operating losses, these losses shrank to almost break even. These strong results pushed the stock price up to $310 per share at the peak, giving it a market capitalization of $60 billion. That's quite a hefty valuation for a company only expected to do $2 billion in sales this year, and is still posting gap losses. That also makes it bigger than Twitter, Chipotle, and other household names. But this all changed on Thursday, December 2nd, when they released their third quarter results. The stock price was almost cut in half, wiping out close to $30 billion of market cap. So how bad were these results to justify such a draconian reaction? As it turns out, their results actually beat expectations. They generated $545 million of sales, which represents 42% growth year over year. In fact, they actually beat analyst expectations of $531 million. The disappointment came from their fourth quarter guidance. Keep in mind that DocuSign has a weird fiscal year, where fiscal Q4 2022 is three months ending January 31st, 2022. Their guidance is for roughly $560 million. Usually, guidance for one quarter out is pretty accurate, because they know how their conversions with prospective customers are going and have a few months of visibility. So it's pretty safe to assume that they will make something close to their $560 million guidance. Based on their guidance, their revenue will only grow by 2.7% quarter over quarter. That's a sharp deceleration from their 6.6% and 9.1% growths in previous quarters. Interestingly, their guidance wasn't even that far below analyst expectations. They were expecting $574 million for the fourth quarter. DocuSign's guidance of $560 million is only 2.4% below that number. So how is it possible a stock can fall by 46% when they miss one quarter of guidance by just 2.4%? It seems like a massive overreaction. But you have to look at the setup for the stock going into the earnings. DocuSign was by no means a cheap stock. At its peak, it had a $60 billion market cap, which is roughly 30 times their expected revenue for this year. And this is revenue, not earnings. To justify this valuation, the company would probably have to five times their revenue within the next 10 years. If they were somehow able to keep up their 50% annualized growth rate they experienced during the pandemic, this could be possible. But that breakneck speed of growth is obviously unsustainable. Even if all the customers they acquired during the pandemic stayed with them forever, they would need to constantly find new customers to keep their 50% annual growth rate. Eventually, everybody who would want to use DocuSign would already be using it, and there's no more room for growth. For a company like Amazon or Tesla, you could theoretically justify pretty much any valuation. They are always innovating and entering new businesses, so their total market opportunity is almost unlimited. But that's not the case for DocuSign. They're a one-trick pony that only focuses on their core market of electronic signatures. Signing documents is a minuscule portion of the overall economy. Even if they continue to dominate that market, their opportunity is capped and they'll probably never live up to the $60 billion valuation that they enjoyed at the peak. Wall Street got lazy over the past year, and investors just bought any company that was benefiting from COVID. They extrapolated the high percentage growth rates way too far and gave these companies absurd valuations. When that happens, the stock is walking on a knife's edge. If growth slows down even a little bit, the stock price will be crushed like a souffle under a sledgehammer. One of the biggest holders of DocuSign was Kathy Wood's ARK Invest. Between their various ETFs, they owned a little over 1% of DocuSign's outstanding shares, which was worth almost $400 million before the stock tanked. With a share price cut in half, they lost almost $200 million. Interestingly, they bought the dip after the earnings release, increasing their position by 50% from 1.6 million shares to 2.4 million. And while it is true that the dramatic fall in share price was probably an overreaction, the company was probably ridiculously overvalued to begin with. Now it's just less overvalued. DocuSign was just the latest shoe to drop, but the stay-at-home complex has been steadily deteriorating over the past year. Zoom Communications is down 48% since the beginning of this year. Teladoc is down 54%, and the biggest loser is Peloton, which is down 70%. DocuSign bucked the trend and was actually up a little bit. But of course, that all changed with their recent earnings report. The severity of the price declines we've seen in these high-growth tech stocks is probably the most dramatic we've ever seen since the bursting of the dot-com bubble in 2000. While a lot of the dot-com companies ended up going bankrupt, a few of them rose from the ashes and provided life-changing returns for those who bought the dip on the lows. While this video is not financial advice, there are probably similar opportunities with some of these stay-at-home stocks now. At the very least, 
If you bought today, you're better off than the people who bought at the peak and are already down more than 50%. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about DocuSign's earnings miss? Do you think the decline in share price was an overreaction? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.